Dire team pick. Queen. Welcome back, everybody. After a very long and disjointed game number one, we're finally into getting into game number two, where Navi are leading with a one-game advantage. We're going to jump straight into the draft now, and I welcome in Eternal Envy once again. EE. -E. Any Hello. thoughts about that last game, and how's that new mic? No, it is still my old mic. Oh, it's still your old mic? Okay, okay. I was about to say, because you didn't sound any different, but... Alright, they picked the uh, screen over Taro. Alright. I'm not coming, by the way. What do, you, what do you think about uh, PL as, as a carry? Because Blitz and I, whenever we have conversations about PL, we feel like there are, are three good counters to PL, and that's Earthshaker, Leshrac, and Gyrocopter. And, and, you, and all of them are not necessarily hard counters. Like, PL, seconds. if you go late enough, like, just anything can happen. Especially, again, like, Gyrocopter's more of an early Five to mid-game uh, counter to PL. Once you start going late-game, he's really never enough. Time. I think uh, Leshrac counters PL to death. I don't think you can play against uh, Leshrac with PL. But I think... Uh, Earthshaker, Jaro, you can play against them, but you don't really want to play against Earthshaker. Jaro, I think, is fairly easy to deal with. And it's, I mean, Jaro is Jaro, so he, of course it's hard to deal with, but like, Piel himself doesn't, doesn't care that much about Jaro. Yeah. Because after the first fleck, like, there's, he's not really AoE anymore. Now, they do have some pretty good uh, AoE control, though, to go against that Phantom Lancer with the Winter Wyvern pickup. Yeah, Winter counters him. I'm just so surprised they picked Co-op over Jaro. It's just... I guess Yoki doesn't want to play Show. I mean, he's fucking done. <laughs> he's playing it away. Yeah, he, he bans it away. They're going to be a, a Tuss ban now for Na'Vi. I'm a little bit surprised because I actually feel like... I mean, Tuss is obviously still an incredibly strong hero, but I, I feel like Winter Wyvern is probably one of the better support counters to, um, to the Tusk. Hmm. Yeah, I, I I can see that. No, I don't know. Actually, no, I, I don't know. That's true. All right, well, we got the oh, Darkseer. So uh, the Darkseer, va the Vacuum, Winter Wyvern combination. That's way too deadly, so new team. Yeah, with Garo as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that that's actually a good point. They'd have the ultimate AoE combination. It's actually sort of to predict fix when you don't have the heroes in front of you. Oh, it really is. Believe me, as, as a caster, I wish there was heroes in front of me Reserve. all the time. Because you just have to operate like, okay, what are normally the picks at this point? Lich banned away by Navi? Okay, I mean, that's definitely a go black hero, but... It's an interesting yeah. one. I don't know about that ban either. Yeah. I mean, I could see Goblak doing something really weird, like, like Lich, Queen of Pain, dual offlane, or something like that, you know? Yeah. Hmm. What to pick, what to pick? Did you admit put hero on the offlane hero? Or support? What are some of the best mids to run with, um, run with Gyrocopter? Because he's a, he's a very naturally, like, aggressive hero, he's a pretty good, he, like, he's a hero that can fight early on, one of the few carries that can truly dominate team fights. I think, uh, Storm. That's good. Just because Gyrocopter's in... I think, in uh, Ember is good. Okay. Hmm? Well, it's uh, it, it's cause, um, Jarl's... Like, a lot of heroes are good with Jarl. It's because he just... Jarl just kills everyone. And... Jarl's kind of tanky, so you kind of have to kill him as well. Because he kills everyone otherwise. Mm -hmm. And if you have any other semi-carry, or carry, for mid... Like, Ember, Storm, that stuff, whatever. Queen, doesn't matter. Lina, Lushra. All these heroes that do a lot of damage. That kills everything. Like... You have to kind of kill one of them, and the, when you try to kill one, the other one kills you. Dio That's what team. happens. Uh, Windrunner? No, I don't don't like that pick. I'm surprised it didn't go Storm again. I've seen a number of people pick it against uh, Phantom Lancer specifically. I mean... What? I, that sounds so wrong. I, I, I know, and like, I, I, the first time I saw it, I was like, I don't like it, and Blitz is like, well, if you do get the Shackle Shot on PL, then you're godlike. But... Maybe. Everything else is kind of, eh. Ah, uh, that was shocking. Some shocking stuff. No. Wind Ranger does uh, potentially beat out Queen of Pain mid, though. And that's pretty important, right? Uh, Wind Ranger first Queen mid? Yeah. I, I don't know. I think it's pretty even. Yeah. 
I, I'm not too sure. I mean, it depends on the health. I it should be pretty even, naturally. Though. I, yeah. I, I can see both sides winning easily. I remember watching um, Denny play this exact match matchup with Wind Ranger and, and, and going for the win run level one and really trying to push that um, that evasion advantage that he had and just get a, like a whole bunch of harassment shots on the Queen of Thieves. It worked out pretty well. I should suck and scary, dude. And thanks for a breaker. Yeah, that's going to be that I'm, duel. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm kind of glad they uh, went win run uh, instead of uh, Storm. So that, that's actually uh, PSM, dude. What a guy. Because the, th the thing with Storm is like he's kind of easily gankable mid and whatever. Like, Queen can just beat him on a 1 2, maybe. Mm -hmm. And if any hope at all, he might die. Because they need to focus on bottom lane. Like, whether they win this game or not, it's going to be based on how much Strip Breaker on Dying can do. Uh, because that safe lane is freaking hard to beat. Winter Jarl, Rubik. So, well, this, and, and then Winter can fend on her own against Queen if Spirit Breaker ganks her and Spirit Breaker. I mean, right. Winter can survive long enough for Winter or Rubik to TP in. So, now, now their picks looks fucking solid. I like the last man out from Navi, Dazzle, probably. They only need. Uh, just one hero to be able to babysit the Phantom Lancer and the uh, the PL Dazzle combination is really dangerous with all those illusions. Yeah, it's uh, also really good hero against Jarl to some extent. Ooh, okay, so they see the aggro dual lane and now they're gonna run what an aggro tri lane of their own and leave Bloodseeker safe lane solo. They could do that. I, I actually prefer they just safe lane tri lane against that shit. I think Winter can just use Q to hit both of them. And then Rubik and Charles can... And, and then the three range heroes. I don't think Undying Spirit can do anything, actually. If they did that, though, what would Bloodseeker do? Would he jungle? He could do that. He could go offlane. I don't know why they picked Bloodseeker. I actually look confused. That's fucking Silencer. <laughs> Silencer has been the pick. Oh, for whatever That's reason, after Diablo, both Southeast Asia and Europe have been running a lot of support Silencer and... I do not feel it's been very successful at all. It's uh, really good against Winter. You can't save, you can't counter initiate. Yeah. You can't counter initiate with Jar ulti, you can't, ca you can't do anything, actually. The, the Spirit Breaker charges you, and global, and then you're sad. You're a sad boy. Like, Queen <laughs> just jumps in, and then starts with two globals, and you're sad. Yeah. Uh, actually, like, what's up with this Bloodseeker pick? And new team's pick is golly, again. Maybe, maybe I'm just wrong though. I was wrong last game. It really depends. Like it depends on this offlane. Like this spirit break around dying. Are they gonna do anything? Are they gonna destroy everyone? Like, because if they if they get good farm, ten seconds, and it's it's against the trial lane. If, if they go up against the trial lane, and they do well, like this game is easy. But uh, if they don't, this game just gets weird. See, my, my thought process was that maybe they would run aggro tri lane from Navi, and then they would that would force the Undying to pull up to that top lane, and then you would be left Bloodseeker one versus one against Spirit Breaker. But then you'd also have an aggro tri lane against an Undying, and that does not sound like a good time at all. So, yeah. uh, Navi are gonna have to pull something really weird out for this laning phase. We'll see. Uh, they're gonna go start out with a five man smoke. Oh my! I can. Yeah. These guys, dude. Like. But CDI already went for the early TP out and already has the aggressive wards. So he actually goes for a ward on both sides, both of which do block out this pole camp. So. It's become really common. Yeah. I've kind of called the escalation of force between the, the offlaners and the supports. Where it used to be the offlaners would immediately run and try and get the ward down, but then supports would do the same thing. So then offlaners started TPing, and then you started seeing supports TPing as well. It was just this very odd escalation of force where you would see uh, heavier and heavier commitment hey, to be able are to they, stop. Are they going to try to fight this rune? Like, I think so. Are they serious? Fighting and undying for it. Uh, we'll see. Maybe they think they can just win. I mean, they do have the numbers advantage here, FN. He's still in the top lane, but... Gold Black starts leading things off. Three-man decay to start things. Okay, that's a good start. Charge comes in. Able to get that Telekinesis. Pulls him right back into Kudas. And will be able to get a lot of uh, damage out with that Rocket Barrage. Still Gold Black looking for more. Managed to get another two-man decay. And Kudas only left with 100 HP. They've got another decay up in five seconds. Plus the charge coming in. Sineko is not going to be able to stop this one at all. The charge lands. And with another decay, they'll finish him off. First blood goes to Gold Black. And now Sidoy, well, he's in some trouble. Still tanky as all hell, though. And he's 
he's got a potion. If you can just get it out of range of these supports, you'll be good. PSM trying to get the orb walking as best as possible. We'll be able to tell Kinesis, Cedoy. Oh, a couple more right clicks, and Echo's actually dropping pretty low, but they finally do get Cedoy. And now Go Black is left to a point where his decay stacks are actually beginning to run out. So he can't fight any longer. They got the first blood. Did they get the bounty rune? He's got suicide rush now, I think. Yeah. yeah, they got both irons. Oh, um, so Queen of Pain. Oh, he's not suicide, though. I guess he has a um, plus. Hmm. I, I would have thought just because of low of mana that he, he would have been willing to. Uh, oh. Bloodseeker, yeah, okay. Offlane Bloodseeker. Already. Wait, what's Gold Black doing? Oh, he's waiting for his fucking decays to run out so he can blast. Yeah. I mean, come on, dude, just do that. Yeah. Unfortunately, he had to uh, tank up for the uh, the Phantom Lancer off of that dive. Still, though, they did get the kill on the Bloodseeker. Offlane Bloodseeker is now going to be paired up with uh, Winter Wyvern. Maybe this will make things a little bit easier. But he actually, he actually went. Uh, these makes no. This this is not good. This makes things super hard for. for yeah, doing. Oh wait, but Rubik's pulling though. Oh yeah, he's doing. Oh, the what a, oh god, I mean this guy is freaking smart. Uh, that was actually crushed. That was actually so ownage. That destroyed this dueling. It's still hard for the gyrocopter, right? <laughs> just because they can. Just freely dive him under tower, but right, he's, gonna, he's gonna have two ways under his tower now. Like yeah. he's gonna get both ways for free. They're not gonna dive him. He's level one on dying. He has no tombstone. Oh wow! He can't him. He's yeah, just gonna. All right, well, Cedo is actually going to leave lane and go for the charge here in the middle. Dendi is low already. He's got wind run. Will be able to get it off. And Telkinesis is actually nice toss back onto Yoku, who still has a blink, but they're actually going to turn on to PSM with that double damage. Seneco comes in with a save, though, with a cold embrace. And they'll wait this one out. Yoku still wants to be able to oh, go for it. Oh, who gets the bash and the double damage hit will finish off. Now he wants to go for Dendi still. Wind run is still up, though. And they're fighting underneath the tier one tower. Yoku comes forward, still has a shadow strike. Cedoy, though, will go down eventually, but he got another save. 17% up against Dendi. Finally he falls. The beast is down, but he picked up two kills for all his efforts. Alright. That was pretty absurd. And and now they're actually like Seneca rotating into that middle lane has given Funic the solo experience as the wave pushes in. He's got level three. With all these heroes dropping low constantly and the thirst stacks that he starts picking up, he could actually do all right one versus two if he's got those stacks. I'm dying? No, the the, uh, the Bloodseeker. The thirst stacks that he gets when the enemy is low. Yeah, he's actually doing really well right now. Oh, he's getting charged coming in though. They, they only have enough for one Lance. Zanenko does have the Cold Embrace. He'll oh, so the time. Can they actually bash him enough, though? Funny getting body blocked up a little bit, but no bashes whatsoever, and FN dips into the tower range. Even a blood like, rage. He gave him a blood rage, he's gonna get like, now, maybe. <laughs> yeah, just to be able to uh, have um, those tower hits do a little bit more. DSM now sitting behind <laughs> Dendi's Wind Ranger. Get the rune. We lost one on one for Strahl versus uh, Undying. Interesting. Yeah, and there's, like, there's no like, regen left on Undying. Yeah. I feel like that's the the one tri lane that you um can't necessarily beat. Okay, yeah, left up the hill, maybe. Right. Oh, PSM, winner now. Telekinesis. Oh, regen is actually snagged, and he won't be able to put him up on the cliff. Meanwhile, Cedo is actually charging down. Dendi has another win he has run. Boots on, he has boots on. Uh, Strewbreaker. The bottle him. actually comes in though. Dendi, he's actually just playing putt putt games around with Cedoy, healing himself up, and now Cedoy has been completely kited, much to his death here. Another second for the charge. Potion up, charge away, 18 HP. He's actually going to be able to get out of this one. Seneco. Oh, this, this, this freaking, this freaking Bloodseeker. Oh, shot. Oh, he missed it. He thought Cedo was going to go for the Ancients. It's Bloodseeker though. Oh, 16. He, he's happy. He's, he, he doesn't give any fucks about this Spreebreaker. <laughs> he's so happy right now. He wants the Spirit Breaker to stay alive, just for the extra time for him to have Thirst Stacks. He's hey. playing like a bitch, though. I can't believe how well he's doing as an offlane solo Bloodseeker against PL Silence. He has more last hits than him. Oh, wow. 23 and 2 compared to 19 and 5. That's ridiculous. Meanwhile, Dendi feeling all the pressure in the world with Cedoy constantly charging him up. This bottom lane should still be good for the Gyrocopter. He's uh, 23 and 6 compared to the 12 this and 0. This needs to get a TP line. scroll. This is not acceptable play. This is actually unacceptable. Who does? 
on except like this queen needs to have a TP. He can't just oh. have level seven on Queen of Pain and ulti up and have a TP. Oh. Not right. What do you think about this build where he actually doesn't go for boots at all, but goes for the early Rova Magi, like hard, hard stats? It's bad. Just seems like he wants to, like, just ensure he has a CS advantage over Dendi at all times, especially with the way they're charging him. Like, they're putting everything they have to shut down Dendi. Yeah, I mean... It's not good. I don't think this bro of thing is I good. Don't, I don't think it's paying off. They are going to jump him now. They might have enough damage. They do have the Sonic Wave, but never mind. Cold Embrace is there, and there's not enough burst damage coming out. Now they're going to slow down Seedoy. Charge up in three seconds. Telekinesis comebacks. Dendi's Shackle Shot doesn't quite land. Maybe they still have the damage, though. Turns around, and actually, Sonic Wave still hits Dendi. They're able to finish him off, and Seedoy makes a run for it. Is Yoku able to pick up the double kill? Seneko will just have to TP out. Great turnaround play there from Sidoy, seeing the opportunity for the charge. This rare breaker is just, <laughs> he's so tanky, but it's spell seeker though, he's happy again, yep. kind of. No, no, he's not, he's not, actually, he's actually not happy at all. Well, he's got his level 6 pretty early, he's gonna throw it on FN, Doppelganger is up, but eh, funny, can he actually take this one, the nukes are there from the silencer. Is he gonna die? Oh, that's just too much damage with the Blood Rage. Oh, the Yoki. Two kills, three assists. S4 run. He's, he's, he's happy. <laughs> yes, he is. Uh, what what is he actually? Has he? He's had to have bought something, right? Yeah, he's got his full treads coming out to him now. Huh. Still no he didn't TP. Buy though. Oh no, no 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 never mind. He has a TP on the career. Yeah, that's a big deal. Having that TP means no one else can make plays on the, all the other ones. Right. Like, for example, if Spirit Breaker was bought him with the Undying or something and they charged up the Gyrocopter, you would need to be able to have that, uh, yeah. that extra. Well, he, he needs to wait for his ulti first. Yeah. And he's, he needs to have mana. Let's see, level 5 he's... Dendi compared to uh, Yoku's level 8. Yeah, Yoku gets uh, a regen right now. He's. he's uh... Oh, another one. <laughs> like, oh, top Seneko's gonna join him. They do have the Splinter Blast, but with the TP coming you out. That you should cancel that TP. He needs to cancel that TP. Right. Yeah. The charge, PSM. Interrupts it with the telekinesis, and Tinoi just haste. chasing him all the, the way haste. back. Oh. Yeah, with the haste rune, they're gonna try and make this play. Dendi Shackle Shot does actually stall up the Queen of Pain. And that will save probably the Rubik's life. Yeah, he forced the TP. Sucks though, he, could, he didn't get the regen rune because of the. Uh... It was on the bottom room instead of the top room. Is he oh, Jesus. Do they have the shackle? Oh, they do. Perfect toss back there from PSM to line up the shackle shot beautifully for Dendi. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, they, uh, well, they tried to go on the gyrocopter, but without, uh, without the ultimate out from the Spirit Breaker, they have no real guaranteed stun to stop his TP out. Yeah. Uh, I wish I was watching that. I'll, I'll be cheering, cheering on the Spirit Breaker. Are you a 17% fanboy? Yeah. Is that it? <laughs> I fucking hate that shot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny. He's just gonna run down Go Black. Doesn't even need his ultimate. He's got so much thirst stacks because there was still that Spirit Breaker low HP back at the back of the base. This Spirit Breaker has actually just been... Like, apparently, Bossy can counter Spirit Breaker, apparently. <laughs> because every time Spirit Breaker gets a kill, he's 1 3 <laughs> Oh, man. All oh. game, it's just been the Spirit Breaker. He's gonna be charged up now. But he's got no backup, and Cedar is still only level four. Oh, maybe they're still gonna go for it. They actually do oh, have the Sonic on. Wave. I mean, he, he can ult him. Oh no, he blinked. Oh, he missed his blink. Oh, now they're actually gonna try and turn on the Cedar here with the rupture. Yoku still waiting for his opportunity to go for that Sonic Wave, but he need to heal up, and Funic may still be fine. He's gonna battle it out with Yoku a little bit. Cold embrace, and now the Global Silence is a response. But Yoku out, so just really back out. Oh, global. Yep. I mean, it saved them, but it's uh, kind of saved them. Like, they need, they need like, a level to make a play. DSM. Nothing he can do here, no backup. Funic doesn't have Rupture yet. Sonic Wave comes down, PSM. Oh, Funic actually was hit by that one. He's got to get out of here. Yoku's going to blink forward, cold embrace. Oh, Yoku waiting for the scream, does manage to get the double kill. And now Sineko's got to run himself away, Sidoy. His charge bounced over to neutrals, unfortunately, not the Winter Wyvern. 
or else they maybe could have gone for a triple. I guess we understand why uh, they picked uh, Queen of Pain first pick or Jarakov. Yeah, it seems Looking to fit like rather well into both their general play style as well as Yoku's. It makes sense, right? Because Yoku, uh, that was the only hero he played in the off lane that he can actually play mid now. That mag. He's used to this hero. See, Dendi's actually got a little bit of hard cam stacks, but he is still pretty far behind in our GCC. 3k compared to Yoku's 5k. Pretty dramatic difference. Still, it feels like a lot of this game is going to be on Funnick and what he can do here as the Bloodseeker. Dying lays out the Tombstone. Queen of Pain's not going to try and blink forward. You can blink backwards. He won't take any damage. Yeah. So he's good. He'll just take out the uh, Tombstone for 125 gold. Yeah. Right now, the FN is farming jungle. But he has all coin with, though. Mm. And uh, Slash was just chilling. So even though like they didn't get Queen out. They have the damage, Cedoid charges away. <laughs> he puts Blood Rage on him, but I'm not sure what that's going to be able to do. Well, right, right now, it's looking good for no new team. No, not just because of the kills, because of the top lane as well. Like, the Sonsters getting, getting farmed. FN just farming jungle. After he gets the Renekton. Sineko picks up his attack. level 6 there in the top lane. What do you build as a, as a silencer in this kind of game if you are going to get a decent amount of farm? Refresher. Refresher? Okay. Yeah. Or Medallion, uh. Yeah, maybe the... Um, I mean, normally you would say the Spirit Breaker would go for the Medallion, but he may even go for Midas. I mean, he's going Treads. No. Then he's probably going to go Drums. Uh, I think they want to keep the pressure off. Yeah. I've seen a couple of Spirit Breakers go for this, um, this build where they they choose to finish up Treads if they sit behind in farm, but if they manage to get like a really successful gank here in like the next minute, then they go for the, the Midas. I'm, I, I don't like it though, just because I feel like Spirit Breaker has to put so much emphasis on the early game that stats are, are better suited for you. I think it's very rare for uh, Spirit Breaker to have getting Midas is better. Yeah. But at this game, definitely, I don't think it's good. Radiance top, top lane push. Go black. He's going to join both No Fear and FN in trying to chip down this tier 1 tower. Sineko's ready with the Winter's Curse. But no, he actually just. I, I, I hate this play by, by uh, the new team so much. I, I don't think that's a tower they should be sieging. If they want to look for a fight, they should be sieging the bottom tower. Ooh, Silence actually hits Queen of Pain here. Funny. Does have the Blood Rage. Ooh, Global Silence actually goes out. They're not going to be able to have the control. He blinks over the cliff and TPs out to safety before Navi can get there with Disables. He's so comfortable with that. The play. Like generally, for me, I, I'm very scared of turning my hero when I do it, but he's actually comfortable doing that too. Like, cause I, I usually just like to blink what, which direction I'm facing, but he's like turning and doing it. Yeah. You think they should be pressuring that the safe lane tower? Is that? Yeah, they should be fucking up this drop copter and mm -hmm. they, they charge him and, and they, everyone just goes on. Like. Well, this is gonna look pretty easy. Cedoy has his ultimate, so they're it's gonna make short work of the shower copter. Oh my god, he would have lived. Oh, shackle shot, but. Dendi still met with both No Fear and Cedoy. He's got to get out. He has 17 wand charges. If he ult, if he charge, uh, uses magic wand and then uh, ulti and press Q, I, I think they would have got a turnaround kill. And he, I think he might have lived. Unless he gets 17%. Missed opportunity there. Now, new team are going to be able to put some pressure on that tier 1 tower. Yoku is going to be going for the very early Orchid. He's way far ahead in net worth. So, definitely makes sense for this game. Uh, I wonder if they're if they're gonna pressure her that much because they don't have Queen Ulti anymore. It's, they'd be running into. For, uh, uh, he's missing. They, they don't have global either, and they're missing gold for his orchid, so they don't really have their items right now. Mm -hmm. But I guess they're just too strong. So. Navi not feeling comfortable, or not gonna try to defend, despite uh, they still had Winter's Curse and everything ready to go. I guess they just can't. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. 
Global up in another 20 seconds. If they want to be able to go for, say, the middle tier one tower, Sineko is going to be hit by that ultimate from Cedoy. Charge back, push in a little bit more, and a bit of extra intelligence for No Fear. The Rubik is like, guys, go top. Why you guys bottom? This is looking pretty bad now for Navi. Is this tier two? Sh like, looks like it's going to be going down now. With that extra amount of gold, No Fear is actually going to be able to pick up the medallion, which means we have a much easier time for new teams to Yeah, I charge him mid. The TPN. No rockets yet. Power saved. Tower bottom secured. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Regen for Dendi. Meanwhile, Funnick and uh, our Gyrocopter are going to try and take that tier 1 tower in exchange for the bottom tier 2 that they're just giving up. I wonder if they can defend uh, if they charge them. Everyone's going to cancel or whatever. Well, they're going to try. Uh, tier 2. FN's going to be able to take it. And they will be able to get the Winter's Curse on to go black. Global Silence is the response. He will be able to get off at least the Tombstone and as well as that Decay will keep him alive long enough to be able to dish out some more damage. Snako is going to be the next target. FN finishes him off. The Tombstone dies, and Kunis now looks to be able to chase down some heroes, but he's actually going to be the one chased down. As Cedoy comes in, doesn't have his ultimate just yet, but between the slow and the 17%, it doesn't seem to matter. They'll pick up an additional kill in the Gyrocopter and make it a one-for-two trade. Yeah, we're going to get Mitaro now, I think. Mm, this game's looking, I mean, it's looking quite impossible, actually. <laughs> This Phoenix really farm though. He's really, really farm. I think like he has level, f so he doesn't have the bottle right, the team fight spell. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Not too sure how they can win a fight here. Especially without Winter's Curse. Like, can they steal anything that wins them a fight? No, not really. They ha I guess he has to steal the Queen ulti. And then, it's so hard, he needs like, it has, he, they need some magic, they need like, freaking Blood Rage level 4 on Rubik, and Rubik steals Queen Alfie. And then they can win the fight. <laughs> uh, like, that's, that's the only level of bullshit I can see them winning the fight. <laughs> there's, there's basically a laundry list that needs to happen for Na'Vi before there, it's even possible for them to win a team fight. Yeah, I mean, they, they can also wait for new team to fuck up, like, if they fight level Global Silence, then they can win the fight. But... Yeah, other than that, he might minus on Spirit Breaker, that has to be a mistake. <laughs> I mean, they can win a fight as well, too. Mm -hmm. Alright, well, FN, he, he just picked up Boots of Travel. I expected him to be spending all his time in the top lane while his team pushes in middle, but he's actually going to be getting aggressive here. They're going to go on to Seneca with this Orchid. He managed to get off the flying bit and get over the trees, but there's still the Lance as well as the ultimate. Oh, they actually cancel that. It's Cold Embrace. Yoku will just take out that sitting duck. I'll take that tier one tower in response. Navi are actually getting, uh, I feel like, a lot because of that. Like, yeah, they lost their support, but they're still farming up that top lane, and they're going to be able to take the, the bottom tower in return. Yeah, they're still pushing pretty well. It's not, that's not easy to do because they're against the Spurper. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Looks like Funnick is not going to be completing the uh, the S and Y. He's going to be going for the BKB first. Feels like it is a bit necessary. PSM gets caught here. Does have a lance as well as telekinesis. Maybe he can. Oh, oh somewhere. Never mind. Charge somewhere. He's got another strike. Oh, oh man. Yeah. You wanted to be able to steal the charge, but unless he's going to juke his way out of this. Actually, Yoku. Oh. Oh, so fast, do you see that? He, there's no yeah, animation. There's, there's no animation, so he just instantly, it's like a... <laughs> yeah, it's no strike. damage, though. It's like a blink strike, but that's no damage. Because he doesn't have the passive. Right? Is that how it works? I think so. He yeah. does zero damage. Yeah, you... you uh... That sounds right. Alright, so tier 1 tower will actually be denied. Not much Navi can actually do about that. When we've got a Sange and now Helm of Iron World... Uh... I, I'm not sure how much he's really like. He picks up the helmet dominator. I'm not sure how much he's gonna be able to stack for himself, considering the commanding position that new team are already in. Like just positioning wise, they've already taken down two of these outer towers and the bottom tier two as well. It, it feels like new team are just gonna control the map, and there's not gonna be a whole lot of opportunities for him to stack ancients. Um, well, the thing with radiant is like, 
We're gonna be able to sacks because they're primarily gonna be focusing around the Roshan right now. But let's see. It's, it's still a guide to have if you want. Those eggs for Dendi. <laughs> He's actually going to start using uh, Focus Fire to clear through some of these uh, Ancients bit by bit. I actually really like this build by Havos. I'm thinking about it like, instead of getting drums, he wants to change. In a game where he's losing. Not sure. What specifically, Wait. um... Do you... Whoa, whoa, you're talking about Jarl? Whoa, who are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, Jarl, Jarl, the Sange, instead of the drums. Oh. He just has a casual Sange. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And doesn't he's actually complete the SNY. I'm sure he will now after he's got Helmet Dominator, but... In the meantime, A just now picked up by uh, Yoku, and he's got a BKB of his own actually coming in 500 gold. No, I think they're just gonna steamroll top towers. Both of them. Still a lot of free gold left on that map. FN in the meantime, oh, he's got his Diffusal Blades, so... Now you've got the real fighting power available from the Phantom Lancer as well as the split push. Once he starts getting any tank items, Navi's just gonna have such a hard time. Alright, this is Navi's only timing, but like the problem is like their only timing is followed up by the enemy's uh Aegis. Because they have their Aghanims on uh Winter Arno and they have um you keep on Buster Crow? Like if he gives Blood Rage to Winner, maybe he can get like Maybe he just one shot someone. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You keep on pop no ages. They have to fuse on Phantom. There's no item timing, like they can have on top of the enemy. Like, they're always gonna have their items at the same time. So they all they both teams have all their items, and if both teams have all their items, like new teams are gonna smash them. They've even got a mech coming in from the end dying. Probably another <laughs> two to three minutes, especially if they take down those I thought you were absolutely right, they were just five man down top. Dendi is gonna be in some trouble. He managed to get off the wind run ahead of the Orchid, but it doesn't really matter too much. The Orchid is Cedo, he keeps him in place and they will be able to get the kill. And now they, they, they are they are five man top. Yeah. It, it, just the way you do it is you don't just run five people top because if you do that then it gives them too much of the map. What you do instead is you, you go mid with four heroes and you're too strong, so they're not gonna fight you for a side. And then you just rotate top through mid. Oh, okay. And then that way the guy uh, it kind of crushes their like, dreams of going anywhere far. Right, so essentially you just limit them to the jungle and bottom lane farm and that's it. Yeah. Okay. Radiance top tower has fallen. If you go five people top and everyone's hitting creeps at the same time, then it's like, oh, I guess I see all five heroes on the map. Yeah. Because if you only see the PL, then you can't really do anything because they could be anywhere. And PL can, like, travel anyway. Well, Funnick's making the most of this, at least. I think they're gonna go high ground. No. See, they have, they have level four flash with Blood Rage, I guess? Like. They, if they get a, they have the spells, like, they have decent spells to win team fights with. It's freaking hard though. When you say, the, um, go uphill, do you, do you mean that new team should have just, like, kind of poked uphill and forced TPs, essentially? Yeah, it's fine. They already TP there. I, I think they're gonna get mid tower now, and I actually advise new team not to push any further in the mid tower. I think after they get the tier 2, they should just chill and farm. Because they don't really have any hero that like rushes down the tower. They don't have an SF, they don't have any a dragon. Like they have freaking kill. Like, none, none of these heroes are gonna hit the tower. And like, they, have, they have a lot of spam, they have a power shot. They have the up right up. But they have a lot of people. Yeah, if they get the right combination of spells on the side of Navi, they can play a really good defense. Yeah, so I, I don't think they should push. They should just keep trying to secure the map. And they have a Spirit Breaker, so it's extremely easy for them to, like, secure the map. And they have travels and stuff. But they, they should get this mid tower with this Aegis. And then after that, uh, if they farm. Farm forever. Dendi, does he just continue to go for the straight damage builds? Crystalis. Dendi's fucking dead, dude. Yeah, go black. He's gonna be able to start to think off. Manage to push him back, and they even have the boots to travel. Dendi, nice play, actually killing that zombie. But he's on a win run, and that makes things a lot easier for Cedoy as well as the zombies. He'll get the pick off, and Yoku's now running into all this team. He does still have his Aegis. He's gonna turn and fight as best as possible. Three man Sonic Wave. He'll come back with a second life. They do have the ultimate from Seneko, but they're not even gonna try and chance it, especially with Global. Oh, Simon. what? Oh, and that's what happened. Okay, I was like, I was like, well, how come he's charging the base? <laughs> never mind. No, 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 no. Um, 
he was going on the gyrocopter with TP back. Yeah, I was like, why is he not? Ch like, how how is he charging? Uh, not like switching for you. It doesn't yeah. do that till he's done. Oh, anyway, he's no agent now. They have no thing else today, and they're pushing when everyone on the enemy team is alive. They have no rupture. Twenty seconds. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. I don't know. I think, I think they just feel like they're strong enough. I mean, they almost have like a level 16 PL by 26 minutes. Do Navi fight this? I don't know. It's like, cause if if new team keeps going, then they don't fight this. But if new team refuses to push and they just keep farming now, then like Navi's just dead. Yeah, they're dead. Like, they're, they're gonna wait for next ages. They're just gonna chill, which is, they should be doing. But say in that case, shouldn't should Navi be trying to force his fight? Uh, uh, especially yeah, I feel like they should have fought the turret at the turret too, because n n now like. You, c you have to assume that a good team will wait for the next Aegis. So... Well, they're gonna take that as more farming time, it seems. Flunnick's got 2400 gold. Doesn't look like he wants to finish up his S and Y. What is his next item, though? Funny? Uh, Blood I think I think he should get Moner, because... Um, only one hero on the enemy team is gonna have... Uh, um, what's it called? But a way to clear through the illusions. A BKB. Oh, we're all good. So he, the Moner is gonna crush. And Moner is very good. Like, AoE damage is really good on Bloodseeker because... Oh, Sinego! He's been spotted out. He puts himself right up against the he trees. He's trying to get out, but... Does he, does he know? Does he, does he know? I would hope so. Yeah, they know. They know, yeah, they know. The supports are gonna pick it up. Well, they just got that much worse for now for Na'Vi. Lost the gem. I hope Sonico shapes up for next game because the way he's playing right now is like he's already given up. He, he kept Man he keeps running into he keeps running into him and dying like the whole game. Yeah. Like he keeps getting antsy because he he needs to be there to spam out the waves. And the, the tier two tower only died because he died first and he wasn't there to spam out. Can you talk about the Manta on the Bloodseeker when he already has BKB? Skip. Oh, 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 Manta popped right as the uh, ultimate was attempted there from Cedo. They do have the global silence. It looks like Cedo is just going to TP back to base during that global. No uh, abilities to be able to stop that out. Now they're actually going to turn Sonic Wave, lands on three, and they do manage to get an okay blood right, but it's still not enough. It's turn Sonic Wave actually turned around on Yoku, but it doesn't matter. He popped his BKB and will be able to get out quite easily. And if anything, our gyrocopter is going to be caught as FN turns his attention from the Rubik, who's already dead, now to the gyrocopter, picks up a third kill. It looks like a tier 3 tower is exactly on the menu here for new team. Radiance bottom tower is oh. under attack. Gyrocopter forcing the buyback. They don't have a buyback on Funic and the creep wave's just so slow. Finally it's here, but new team are only going to get so much damage. I would imagine Navi uh, may still try and fight them 4 versus 5 or I they think they new team Maybe get this tower first and then get the fuck like, No, I think they should get out now. Like, they should just wait for ages. Just, don't, don't push this dude. Let's see how long until Roshan. Potential spawn time is in like 20 seconds from now. So it's a good time for new teams to just try and control the map. Especially since they took away that gem. Navi are going to be blind for the most part. Navi needs to, um... I don't know, they have Flood, they have flood Rage. They're, they're a Windrunner. They can't do anything. It's fucking, it's fucking hard. Like, if this PL gets the ages, it's over. I mean, this game's already over. You, they need to do something. They need to find some sort of engagement. Of how many smokes do they have? The two smokes in the base? What's happening? They just buy two smokes and pop them both. They have no items that they're buying. Like, everyone has auto items. No one has any gold under heroes. Oh, Shackle Shot actually snatches Cedoy here. They have the blood right to be able to make sure he can charge away Glimmer Cape, but it's still not enough. Funnick still had vision. Now he's going to be able to turn for another one. Fear. He's going to be definitely done for as Funnick is right clicking him down. It's actually going all right, but Funnick will eventually lose it. Now Winter's Curse placed on Yoko. Funnick can actually get this kill, but not in time. Yoko's actually able to get the turnaround, and now with that Ben, this fight's going to go real poorly. Now for Navi. They're just trying to make an extraction, it looks like. Still, though, the Gyrocopter is definitely going to be hunted down by both the PL as well as the Queen of Pain. A two for two where they lose their one and I, I guess their kind of two position with the, uh, the Bloodseeker. In exchange for a Spirit Breaker and Silence, are definitely not worth it. Yeah, I, I like the idea by uh, Navi though. They, they went for the play, like it win them the game. 
you had to be aggressive. You can't just sit back and wait for them to take that second Roshan, right? Uh, they, they need a body smoke zone to do something because the uh, Roshan is up in 10 seconds. I mean, they're going to lose the rocks, I guess. So be, I guess it doesn't matter anymore. Uh, why, why heart over Scotty or Butterfly on Phantom Lancer? It's kind of siege, so he needs to make fury. Okay. So you just poke, poke, back up, rely on that regeneration. Uh, FN, in a little deep here, but there's no real danger. Just not any damage. Yoko's actually going to come forward, finish off PSM with that Sonic Wave. Funnick lands the rupture on him. BKB is a response. He still has a blink if he wants to. And will pop it now as Funnick instantly another Manta, but another strike will still go off with FN right on top of him. Funnick, is he going to be able to survive in time? Cold Embrace is actually going to leave opening for FN to maybe be able to burn him out, especially with a purge. Funnick doesn't stand a chance. Dendi has the hide underneath his fountain now. There goes that focus fire on FN. Doesn't have a doppelganger for another second, but he's got the heels as well as that heart. That'll start kicking into play now. That melee Rax will end up falling here, and Na'Vi gonna have to force a four versus five if they want to save anything else. But the range track simply is not gonna be worth it. Illusions? Eh, it looks like enough to be able to finish off that range track, so Na'Vi still lose that. And uh -huh. I wonder what they're gonna do next game. I mean, this game is 100% over. There's no way it went. Oh, yeah. It's like way more over than last game. I wonder like what picks they're gonna go for, because it seems like, like from in their eyes, like from watching new team play the previous series and the, the series, like uh, you gotta you gotta get rid of that fucking co-op. And the other hero that they should be looking at is the the spirit breaker that they picked three times in four games. Well, what what happened in in the banning? They've been banning Lina and Mushra, which she always do. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so what they need is uh, Rush Asti. They have no Blood Rage though, and they have no Medallion. So it's gonna take, a, take quite a while. Well, I like this play from uh, Na'Vi, but it feels like that kind of all-in play. If they get caught Roaching, they're probably just gonna tap out from there. Bring it. They're getting, they're getting pinged out right now, so they're yeah. gonna go. Yoku's got the Sonic Wave there in a really bad position this one. No fear. It's going to be the first caught. They start backing themselves up, playing this game carefully around it. They do get the Tombstone out. No fear now. Witcher's cursed up. They will be able to burst him down finally. Yoku kind of wafts that one as yield been not really good, but still, they are dishing out enough damage to be able to win this fight nonetheless. Sidoi now turns to Denny, pops that another strike. FN just easily cleaning up hero after hero, trying to finish off the Queen of Pain. Still not enough. FN will clean up the Roshan. Funnick. Has to pull out a miracle here, but can't even catch the Queen of Pain. So it's going to be the Aegis now going to FN. How, how does the picks work? And like, can you select what you want? Like first pick, second pick, or is it random? Uh, I believe it's random for game. Yeah, for game master. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh. well, I guess we'll see. Like, Navi gets second pick. Actually, no. I think it's um, random, and then you get to choose first pick or side, and then opposing team gets the uh, other option, right? Either way. They do still have the buyback on the Bloodseeker, they, so they can force another 5 versus 5 if they want to, but it's harder than it's ever been for Na'Vi, with now the Aegis on FN. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Fortunately for them, Phantom Lancer just doesn't have very much damage just yet, so that Tier 3 tower will still stay alive. At least for now. New team, once they've got their full 5 band, though, I don't expect it to last for long. So in, in Navi's eyes right now, like, the, the first two picks for new team were PO and Coop, and Coop 1619, and FN has Roll Duffs. And the other time, uh, FN played PO. He also had throw dust. I know he didn't throw dust, but like he like freaking pretty much solitary that game. Mm -hmm. Pretty scared of these girls, I think. Uh, it seems like the Queen of Pain or the Gyrocopter definitely to new team style. Yeah, but also, what else is I mean, they're obviously scared of Lushra because he's, he's in the first in the pool. I mean, the first pick. So now Navi needs to get first pick again. 
Well, they're actually going to go for this one. Focus fire and Zedoy, but it's just not doing anything. He's hitting him with wet noodles. Zedo is actually going to turn and fight Global Sounds. PSM's going to be pretty easily cleaned up. Shivas comes forward. Sonic Wave all the way going back to the Gyrocopters. Now he's going to be defusaled up. Even with the Cold Embrace there, he'll lose all of his mana in the process. And FN actually just turns to go for a dieback on PSM. He's going to go down as well. The Telekinesis will stun up FN for a little while. Now the Winter Scourge right in front of the Phantom. They do manage to keep the Illusions alive inside the fountain long enough that Zedoy doesn't take any damage from that one. Still, though, they finish off the Tier 3. will look to take the rest of these Raxes, and Na'Vi with only two heroes left. No way they can prevent Maker Creeps. He's done that fountain on me. He can do it. Yep. <laughs> He's going for it, because why not? The charge comes through as well. Zaneko keeps himself alive for as long as possible. Gyrocopter's up next, but... Very dominant return there from new team in game number two. 11 to 36. Them. They, they, they never lost the... They had advantage the whole game. Right, from the beginning. Look at him. Look at him go. He could probably sell his drums and buy like another talisman of evasion. Yeah, he can't buy there, though, that's the problem. Oh, that's right. He needs to, like, he needs to drop his uh, travels and buy, uh, buy some armor right away. Navi. <laughs> Actually being fountain farmed by new team. Been a while I'm just taking them some time to collect themselves and think about uh, what to do next. Yeah. No way they're uh, emo right now. New team. Alright, so it finally ends. Game 2 taken by new team. We will have a game 3 for this series. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back after this though. We also have a secondary series. It's going to be five Jungs facing up against the, uh, the new Empire team. So you'll definitely want to